Okay, so they're reading the text and if they come to a word they're not sure of, you can hear there's a slight pause and then you're going to follow the sounds so that they can say the word so that there's no so that there's continuation of the reading and there's no loss of understanding. Well, how about some silver but eat silver bee. Well, how about some silver bee? Are you serious? Serious, Brian. We eat feet. Are you serious, Brian? We eat feet. Well, I think that's silly, guys. Or oot. Fruit is the best. Now, because this is a decodable reader, it's a reader at their code level, they actually know all of the sound picks in this book. There might be a couple of high frequency words, but, but what we're doing here is that when we have the word that they're not sure of, they can actually follow the sounds to say the word. So give them a chance to follow the sound, say the word. Here is Staten Stan. Here is Stan. So in code mapping readers and decodable readers, there are no surprises. Because the idea is that they were developing fluency and comprehension at every code level. So they know in this book, in this whole book, this whole um, green level SSP book, all you've got is s, a, t, p, e, n, duck level words, which are high frequency words, is, is, a, a, the, a, the, e, hear, s, ed, said. So that's all we've got. And it says, help the speech sound detective work out any others. So if you see this, it means you've got to actually work it out. But all the rest of it, they can actually code quickly, which means that they can read this book because reading isn't just about figuring out the code, it's figuring out the code and understanding it. So at every code level, that's what we need. So all of these words in this book, the child can code so they can follow the sound, say the word, and they can also maintain the, um, the comprehension. And they're real stories. Here is Stan. Stan, sit. So you can talk about um, speech marks and things as well. And you can talk about punctuation. How do I know um, to say Stan, sit? Because there's an exclamation mark there. I'm not going to go Stan, sit. Because the writing, the way that they have talked on paper tells us how to talk. So we're also introducing expression right from the green code level. It is a pan. Stan, it is a pan. It is not a hat. It is a tin. Stan, it is a tin. It is not a drum. This hasn't actually hasn't been updated. That should have a little detective next to it because the d, r, a, m, they're all in the uh, purple code level, so there should be a little detected there. Sorry, that's, this one's not been updated. Snip, snip, no, stand, no. So again, every single word the child can follow the sound, say the word if they don't recognize the word straight away. Recognizing words straight away is because they know the code and they've got automaticity. So it's not a case of them memorizing whole words. They know all of these sound picks so quickly they can go snip, snip, but their brain doesn't need to do that because they can see it straight away, blend it straight away, so they can go snip, snip, snip. No, Stan, no. But if they do come to a word they're not sure of, they can follow the sound, say the word. P -a -t -s pants. And this is why SSP is the only to have code readers that show the code mapping. They show speech sound, speech sound, speech sound, speech sound, speech sound. That's why it goes black, gray, black, gray. So you imagine when we come up to the purple code level or the yellow code level, the gray might be like supposing this was paints. 
then the gray would be AI. So it'd be P A N T paints. Because the two, the green, it shows that it's still one picture for the same speech sound, for that speech sound. No, Stan, no. Is it a hat? No, Stan, no. It is a pin. Stan, put the pin in the tin. Right, so now we're going to do some predictions. What do you think is going to happen? <gasps> He's going to fall. What's going to happen? Pop. We didn't see that coming. Stan, the pin. So it's a real book with everything they need. Stan spins. No, Stan, no. Go. Always oh, looking all angelic. So we're talking about what? Why is she looking puzzled? Because he's looking all angelic and all as if he's behaving himself now. Pips. Oh, but then look at this. Stan's back up to his old antics, spitting the pips. Stan spits the pips. Mum snaps, Stan! Sit, Stan, said Mum. So again, look at this. So speech sound, speech sound, speech sound. They're not going to get confused and think, right, well, that must be, if it was like that, it would be so ad, sad. This is one picture for a different speech sound. Ed. So this is a picture for E eh in this word. Again, go to the cloud. So this is the monster. The only speech sound that this monster loves is eh. So inside his cloud, the eh cloud, that's the speech sound eh, are all the pictures that we've discovered for his speech sound. So when you say eh, that sound is sort of floating in the air. Take a picture with your magic speech sound camera. What might it look like? Because it might look different in different words. So in some words, like when we first look, the very first picture of air that we look at, look at is shown on the outside of the cloud. You might think of it as the letter E. So that is the mo that's the first one we look at. That's the first picture of air that we look at. But look at that word said. We've already discovered that the AI is a picture for air in the word said. If I was working with a child and we'd been looking at, supposing we had looked at paint, and we'd looked at said, then what have we discovered? We've also discovered that that AI, it's a picture for E in the word said, but it's also in the A cloud. So it's also one of the pictures for A. Said, said, P A, and paint. So we're always discovering. You try and teach all of this and you will be there teaching a child to read and spell for three, four years. We don't need to. They have their amazing brains. So give them all the information and they will piece it together because it's a puzzle. It's a code mapping puzzle. And the more we explore words at their code level and outside of their code level using codable readers and um, non-codable readers, real wonderful rich books, the earlier they're going to read and spell authentically, not through memorising anything. Said mum. Stan sits. What's she doing? I think she's telling him off. So we're talking about it as well. These are meaningful readers, meaningful decodable readers. Oh, Stan. Oh, Stan, she might talk about why it's got little writing there and then the author, that's Miss Emma, has made it a bit bigger. It's because it's made it a bit more dramatic, isn't it? Oh, Sam, Sam naps. Mum naps, how do you think Mum's feeling? So we're using vocab. Tired, exhausted. The end. The end? Mum! So it's the SSP green level. These are the sound picks that we've been looking at. And this just gives them a little opportunity to do some spelling. So like a snap, s, n, app, snap, s, n, app, snap, sip, s, ip, sip, s, ip, sip. And the duck puppets. So there you go. So when they're reading outside of their code level, reading all sorts of exciting books, if they come to a word they're not sure of, and they stop for a second, and now if they don't want you to code it for them, they'll go, no, 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 <laughs> they'll tell you. But if they, if they stop for a second, don't do all this 
um, you know, what's the first sound or whatever. There's no point. If they don't know that word and they can't work it out, it doesn't matter about the, the, the first sound. Now, just um, look at, after the word piranha, what they've done there in this lovely book is they've actually given the phonetic symbols. These correspond with the monsters. The monsters are really, really important. I know a lot of people are struggling to really understand um, them, but that's because um, a lot of teachers don't really understand the importance of phonemic awareness, the importance of hearing those speech sounds, and also the importance of really making sure we do use the smallest units. So that's where the phonetic symbol comes in. So it's not the um, syllables like shown above, piranha. It's not on set and rhyme. It's not blends. It's the purest, smallest speech sounds. So the phonetic symbol shown there linked to the speech sounds. So just have a look at the clouds for these monsters and you'll see those same symbols that we see there for piranha. P, I, R, R, N, A. Now they've said it like piranha. I would actually probably have code that as piranha. You'll also see the last one is, um, that's the symbol for the schwa sound. Now, the reason that we get ch that children use the schwa, they start to discover the schwa when they're ready, is because a lot of the children just don't have, a lot of children have really poor phonemic awareness anyway. So to try and explain to a child or even an adult the difference between the a uh in about and the a uh in up, it's very, very difficult. So we tend to stick to the a uh cloud. And when a child starts to say to us, yes, but I hear a slight difference, that's when we say, ah, oh, that's the silly schwa. So have a look at the monsters, and I'll show you the ah uh and the schwa ah. Uh. Phonetic symbols in the cloud. So we've got p, i, r, ah, mm, ah, for the code mapping. Piranha, I would actually probably use piranha, but piranha, what they've done is they've used the schwa, so they've used this one instead. I just make it very simple because we're often teaching two and three year olds. And to be honest, most adults don't really understand what a schwa is. We need to keep things simple, not make them complicated, not make it so that the children don't understand. Can you hear the difference between a uh, in about, a uh, in water? Or the difference between those and a, uh, as in up. Let's keep it simple for everybody. So, supposing they've gone the piranha is a, uh, and they pause, then you follow the sounds for them. Or esh, we're ought a. Uh, and I followed the sounds. So, I know that's fresh water. So, I need to know the sounds for fresh water. Or esh, we're ought a. Uh. Fresh water. So I did the speech sounds. Don't get all, just do the speech sounds because you know that word. Now, if your um, code mapping isn't fantastic, you might say to them, you know, just for now, if you stop, I'll tell you the word and then we'll go back to it. So the child might go, the piranha is a, and then you'll say, fresh water. And they carry on, fish, da 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 da. But then let's go back to code map, fresh water afterwards. So you don't need to do any of this. Um, sound it out, whatever. Supposing they don't know that word. Supposing they've gone, what? And they're looking at that for a second. There's no point saying sound it out. Um, if they could, they would. So tell them the word so they can carry on so they don't lose the comprehension. What's wrong with you, Brian? You're a piranha. What's wrong with you, Brian? You're a piranha. Then go back and code map it. You don't have, not, doesn't have to do it there and then. You can do it at the end of the book. Right, let's remember the words that we need to look at for a, that we need to code map. Wrong. This is the word wrong. Deckhands. R, A, M. Wrong. R, A, M. Three speech sounds. R, A, M. So let's map it. Let's just write the word up here so that we can see it. So every speech sound used, every letter used. R, A, M. I think that's the A. There we go. So, er, ah, uh, mm, er, ah, uh, mm. Then we look at the clouds. Let's look for the er. Er. Is it in there? Yes, it is. Look, there it is. Er. Er. Ah, uh, 
Is the O in the O cloud? Yes, O. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. It's on the other side. Mmm. There it is. Mmm. So we had er, or mm, wrong. Then we might go back to the page. Now I need to read the word again for me. What's wrong with you, Brian? You're a piranha. This whole idea of first sound or whatever is so hit and miss. What's, what's what? Because if the child doesn't know that word, they don't know that actually the W and the R are together because they're a picture of the speech sound er. So that what are they going to go? What's what? What's what? Or ng? Sounds nothing like wrong. And all of that trying to work it out is taking away from the comprehension. Their working memory, if they're stopping all the time to work out a word, then they're using their working memory to do that instead of keep focused on the content. And what's reading? Reading is coding with comprehension. That's why we scaffold it with the code map readers so that they can have more working memory to freed up for comprehension and fluency. But we're also using real books, so we're looking at the code in real books. This code isn't scaffolded, this code is all over the place. But we're giving them a chance to use what parts of the code they know with your help. Now it's irrelevant, there should be no discussion anymore about whether it's whole language or phonics. Um, it's a ridiculous debate because there are good things in both and we actually need the combination of both. We do need scaffolded systematic phonics teaching so that they learn about the code, but they also need to understand the code and they need to be in a book rich environment. So we actually need both. So when people are trying to categorise SSP, it's very difficult because actually SSP is complete. Well, it's it's not completely different. It's what it's got is the best elements of everything. Bring it all together. But what we do is we look at what do good readers have? What do they do? Well, let's give that to every child. So SSP is different, although it has all of the elements that we know are needed um, to develop really good reading, authentic reading and spelling skills. But it's within a book rich um, environment where the teachers love to read and they're inspiring children to not only learn to code very quickly and easily. I want every child reading chapter, age appropriate chapter books by the end of their prep year. If I can do it, everybody can do it. Any socioeconomic area, any number of children in the class, any learning differences. If I can do it, you can do it. And what I do through SSP is just share my techniques and strategies.